guys, Crystal here from Von Brook Reviews and today I just got back from a book fair. So this is an impromptu book haul. I did an unhaul and I got rid of about 15, 20 books. So when I went to the book fair, I said to myself, I said to myself, mm, okay, I'm only allowed to buy 15 more books. Well, I came home on 27. So, I kind of broke the rules, but it's okay. I've got three empty shelves on my bookshelf. So, I am going to show you my haul and then I might do a little bit of a reorganization at the end just to show you where I fit them all in. So, I'll start with the standalones and then I will head over to the series because I really was lucky. Usually when you go to these book fairs, they're run by Lifeline, which is a charity here in Australia. And usually when you go to them, it's really, really hard for you to find the first in a series or a whole series. And I was really, really lucky that I managed to get whole series as well as some first in series of series that I've been looking to start and get into. Some of these, I have no idea why I bought them. I just got told they were good by somebody or I looked up on Goodreads and someone I trust had rated it highly. Some of these I just couldn't walk away from. So they're very much a booktube, bookstagram, it made me do it decision. Without further rambling, let's jump in. So the first book is one that was recommended to me. I went up to one of my friends from bookstagram, her name is Jodie, I will link down below. She is over on bookstagram and she had said to me, everyone needs to read this book, it's a really good book. Uh, and I was like, I have 26 books and it was three for ten dollars so I was like okay I need to get a 27th book and so I went back and I picked this up and that is What the Woods Keep by Katja de Becerra. Katja de Becerra and I've been told by her that it is very much a twisted dark fantasy I think she said. She said it's just one of those weird twisted stories that you can't seem to put down. Compared it very much to House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland so I'm thinking why not pick it up and give it a shot because I needed an extra book anyways. Next up I picked up Money Run by Jack Heath. I almost walked away from this one not realizing it was actually a Jack Heath book and then I saw his name and was like oh my god need to get it because obviously I have to read every Jack Heath book he's ever written and this is one of his older ones I think it was published in 2000 and oh my god I just realized this book is signed <laughs> that is awesome um but this was published back in 2008 so it's one of his older novels I think but yeah I just realized that he's actually signed by the author so that makes it even more exciting so yeah Jack Heath money run absolutely no idea what it's about I just bought it because it was Jack Heath and now I'm even more excited because I've just realized that it is signed next up I picked up uh, Leon on the offbeat by Becky Albertalli I have heard some controversial stuff about this one uh, I know that Gav over at How to Train Your Gavin was a very not fan of this one but I kind of wanted to make my own opinion on it so I've decided that I want to pick it up and give it a read I have read Love Simon and I didn't hate it but didn't love it so I'm excited to see where this one takes me. Maybe I'll hate Leah as much as Gav did. The next two books I have actually already read but I, my copy got destroyed and I was really really lucky that I managed to get hard copies of the two of them so that is The Five People You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Album and The First Phone Call from Heaven which is also by Mitch Album so, so I'm excited that I managed to get both of those in really good quality Backs. The next one I picked up purely because of its size. I was trying to get some more small reads because I'm getting really like messed up with my pick pong because a lot of the books that I'm having to choose from are quite long. So if I have to read 10 books, I'm ending up with 10 really big books on my TBR for the month. So I want to try and get some smaller reads. And I found The Test by Sylvian Neuville. Neuville? Neuville? Sylvian Neuville? And this is a book that is based on the, uh, based in Britain, I think it is. Yeah, and someone is doing a British citizenship test that involves 25 questions, but apparently it takes a like traumatic kind of unexpected turn and the person who's doing the test ends up with the power of life and death. So it is a small read. I think it's only... 
It's like 105 pages long, so it is quite a small read, but I um, saw on Goodreads that it has some quite high ratings, and some of the people that I trust have read it and said that they enjoyed it. So I hadn't heard of it at all, but I picked it up just because of how small it was, did a bit of research into it, and it sounds right up my alley because it sounds very twisted and bizarre, so keen. The next one is Let Me Lie by Claire McIntosh. So this one is a thriller by an author that I have heard really good things about. I have her book I See You and I Let You Go. Haven't read either of them because you know that's what you do you just collect books from all the same author and then never read any of them. My understanding of how Jodie explained it to me is that this is a story of a daughter whose parents both committed suicide at separate times like six months apart or something a few months apart and she kind of gets older she has a child now and she wants to start looking into their death and she finds some weird and um, wacky things. I like the idea of it just being a thrilling read because I do love a good thriller. The next one was a total bookstagram made me buy and that is The Deceptions by Suzanne Leal. This one I have seen everywhere and I had serious FOMO and I was just really grateful to find it. I did look into it a bit more uh, after I put it in my bag and it has a really high Goodreads rating and again people that I trust have said that they really really liked this one so the Deceptions by Suzanne Leal couldn't walk away without it. And I also love the fact that this one travels from Prague to Australia, so it has like that European element that I love to read about as well as the Australian element that I love to read about. They're my probably two favourite settings that I enjoy to read about in terms of country, plot, location. So I can see myself enjoying it for that element as well. Next I picked up a beautiful stunning edition of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. It's got the beautiful leather down the side, the gold and just beautiful green is my favourite colour. I couldn't walk away from it. I don't have a copy of it at the moment and I've been waiting to get a copy. And I figured what a better time than now and getting a nice leather bound edition. If you've watched this channel you know for a while other than Jack Heath one of my other favourite authors is Kristen Hanna and I'm slowly trying to collect all of her books and I managed to pick up Night Road by her uh, again, I she's an auto buy author for me. I don't even read the back of the books. I just know it's one I don't have, and I straight away just grab it. So I absolutely don't know anything about Night Road, and I prefer to go in blind to Kristen's books because I feel like they're more heartbreaking if you haven't read the synopsis and kind of know some of the story. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Another bookstagram YouTube totally influenced purchase was The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. First up. The cover is stunning. Second up, uh, one of the people that I know and love, Nick, and as well as Lola and Pokey, some friends of mine over on Bookstagram, have said that they really, really liked this one. So I'm just trusting other people who've read books similar to me and adding it to my shelf. My understanding of this is that there's a Norwegian island where uh, an accident happened and all of the men are wiped out. So now it is only women in the in the this island and a bit of time after all the men are wiped out this like sinister figure shows up and it just sounds spooky and I love it. I just I just need to read it so I'm very very much had FOMO so I had to pick it up. So an author that I have bought a lot of their books but haven't read any of them one of, there's many, is Deborah Rodriguez and this is the last one I needed to get to get all of her books which was The Little Coffee Shop out of Kabul which I um, Again, know nothing about. I just know that a lot of her stories are very um, ethnical based and culture shock and it's nice to break up and read something a little bit different. So I have heard that these stories are very, very um, immersive and stunning to read. I feel that they're very vivid in the way that she writes is what I've heard. So I am excited to pick it up. But in saying that, I have like the house of the Carnival Street, well as Island on the Edge of the World, and I haven't read either of them. So I'm just excited to add another one to the collection. Now my last standalone is um, Below Deck by Sophie Hardcastle. I just wanted to buy this one to support a local Australian author. And again, people that I know and love have shouted from the rooftops for how much they loved this book. Definitely feel like I needed to not walk away from it when it was so cheap like I got all of these books for $90 it was three for ten bucks so I'm pretty stoked to add this one to my collection considering that they're all in such good condition. Hi chocolate break! Mm -hmm. Oh it's cold. <laughs> 
Now let's jump into the series. That's what we're all here for, right? We love our YA series. We love series on this channel. I have great time reading series, so I was really excited to find some really, really popular, well-known series that I have had on my wish list for a really long time for so cheap and in such good quality. So let's jump on it. First up, I got Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is very much a Jade from J.U.A. Reads inspired, oh, kind of influenced decision. She absolutely loves V.E. Schwab. She shouted how much she loves him. And so I just feel like I need to give V.E. Schwab a chance. I haven't read anything by this author, but I hear that this is a good place to start. So I picked up Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I then also was really, really lucky to pick up four books in the Dragon Keeper series. So I got uh, two, three, four, and five, all in great condition. I'm so stoked for this. I have heard really good things about this series. I bought book one a while ago, still haven't read it, but I love trying to complete series from secondhand bookshops and, and stores like this rather than having to buy them brand new. So I was really, really thankful that I was able to get almost an entire collection for you know, $14. My understanding of the uh, Dragon Keeper series by Caroline Wilkinson is that a, a slave girl saves the life of a dragon and is able to escape her brutal master in doing so. It's based in the Han Dynasty in China. So I feel like it's going to be very cultural based and I love a book of dragons in it. So I know that I'm going to love the whole series and probably gobble it up. So very, very excited. I'll probably have to move this one higher up my list now that I have the rest of the series. I didn't really want to start it until I had more because I knew that once I started I wouldn't want to stop. The next one that I was lucky to get was Caraval by Stephanie Garber. Unfortunately I wasn't able to get anything else in the series so I probably will wait until I get the other two because I don't like to start a series that I know ends on cliffhangers which I'm very very certain Caraval does without having the other ones on, on hand or able to access really easily. So I generally wait until I get a couple of the other books in the series before I like jump in. The last book that I read that was circus based, I didn't really like, which was the book by Erin Morgenstern, The Night Circus. So I'm hoping that Caraval will reinstate that love of circus books that a lot of people have for me because I didn't really like Night Circus. So let me know in the comments down below if you think Caraval is different or similar to The Night Circus because if it's very similar to The Night Circus I probably won't like it. <laughs> the next one was a series I hadn't heard about but I couldn't, I, like the cover just drew me in and I was really really intrigued. I read a bit more about the series and it's got quite a high rating so I'm surprised it's not talking about more and that is The Chosen by Rochelle Decker. The name of that author sounded really familiar but I can't figure out why but I have not heard this spoken about on Bookstagram or YouTube at all, but it sounded like right up my alley. It sounded very, very dystopian, um, which is what everybody was obviously there for back in 2000 and whatever time this was published. Back in like 2015, 2016, dystopian kind of series were very, very popular back then, but this was one that obviously slip through the cracks. I personally haven't heard it spoken about very much. So I absolutely loved like The Hunger Games and Divergent and like the other th dystopian kind of series that were released around this time. So if it's anything like those, I know I'm going to have a good time. This find I was surprised by. I did not expect to find something like this at secondhand book fair, but I managed to pick up a copy of The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon. Super stoked. I don't even have the rest of the Bone series, but I know I'm going to want to read it. So to pick this up for, you know, a couple of bucks at a secondhand fair in such good condition. It looks like it's not even been read. I'm pretty stoked. The last two series that I was able to acquire at this book fair, uh, I knew nothing about, but I have seen people that I trust give these five star ratings and so I couldn't walk away. And the first one is The Rook and Stiletto by Daniel O'Malley. These ones were given five star by Jack Heath himself. So when your favorite author gives a book five stars, you kind of have to pick them up. Well, I saw them originally and was intrigued and then kind of walked away and then I went back with a friend and was like, oh, have you read these? Like. Do you think they're good or not? Like, have you heard about them? And they hadn't either, but I was really, really intrigued. And so I was like, I'll put them in my maybe pile. And then I went over and was like looking on Goodreads to see what it was about, who I knew who had read it, 
and Jack Heath, top of the list, gave it five stars, so I instantly put it in the, yep, I'm taking it pile. I have absolutely no idea what it is about. All I know is that um, he said yes, so I said yes. I then also managed to get four books in the Chronicles of Ancient Darkness series. That is Oathbreaker, Wolf Brother, whoop, Spirit Walker, and Outcast all in hardback. Unfortunately, um, Wolf Brother's a little damaged on the side, but I don't really mind. I think that I bought them purely because the story sounds really good, not because of the, the state of the book. Uh, but I mean, they're still in pretty good condition, so I'm pretty stoked. So upon looking into the Chronicle of Ancient Darkness series, Thorak is alone, wounded, terrified, and on the run. And now, case like his father, he has avoided all contact with the clans until now. Now his father lies dead, slaughtered by a demon in the form of a great bear. Somehow, Torak must keep going. His only ally is an orphaned wolf cub. His only chance of survival is his skill as a hunter. But salvation is the only thing in the forest to fear. Through the whispering spruce trees comes an evil more terrible than any clan can imagine, left alone, let alone defeat. The moon of Red Willow is fast approaching and soon Tarak, and only Tarak, must face a foe he can neither outrun nor outwit. A foe who stalks him as silently as breath. Oh, so, that's the first book in the series. I haven't read any of the extra information about the other series. I just love the idea. I love books that follow kind of like a dark element with a human and animal companion. I very, very much was a huge fan of Clan of the Cave Bear and that kind of series. So I'm thinking this is going to be fairly similar in its vibe. So now I am going to sit down, catalog all of these on my Goodreads and emboss them with my embosser and then shuffle this, shuff shuffle this shelf around and try and fit them all on. I'm thinking that what I want to do is Reorganize a little bit. At the moment, as you can see, I have my shelves in rainbow. I'm thinking maybe I want to kind of move back to what I originally had when I first got the shelves, which was had my series kind of together rather than separated. But I have recently seen that a couple of people have been organizing their bookshelves by genre, and now I'm like, oh, it's one thing I haven't tried. Maybe I want to try that. And then if I do do it by genre, I can still have the series together because they will be of the same genre. So I'm thinking I might try genre. So we'll see how it all fits on my shelf, but here we go. I'm going to emboss and recategorize. Now I just realized that I actually have 22 other books that I've acquired in the month of March, that's April, prior to the book fair. Um, so I'm just gonna go through those really, really quickly, show you what I got, because I'm not gonna bother embossing and reorganizing these if I haven't got those organized as well. So I'll just show you some of my other March and April finds from op shops mainly, I think. This time I'll start with the series and then I'll head on to the individuals. So I picked up Six of Crows, which I'm currently reading so I don't have a copy of, and also Crooked Kingdom because I was reading Six of Crows for my TBR for the month of April and I figured I'd get both, so I managed to pick up both online. It's probably the only new book I've bought in a really long time. I then also picked Us Against You by Frederick Borgman. This is the sequel to uh, Bear Town, so I haven't start, read Bear Town yet, but it's my only one still left to read of Frederick Borgman, so I kind of had to get the book two of that. I had to finish off the Dark Artifices series. I had book one and book two, but I didn't have book three, so I picked up Queens of the Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. I'm slowly trying to collect my favourite series by Christopher Paolini when I was a child, which is the Aragon series, but I only managed to pick up Eldest and a Bright Singer, but I will slowly get those. I am able to find the shorter version, like the small one, but I'm wanting to get the bigger editions if I can. The same with the Inkheart trilogy. I managed to get all three books individually, but then I saw this with all three in one, and I decided, why the hell not? After Ever Happy by Anna Todd. This is going to be my guilty pleasure series that I, I think I'm going to get into. I have after on my 21 books to, that I want to read in 2021. I'll have that link for you if you want to go check them out. But I am obviously slowly trying to collect the rest of the series. So once I start, I can continue because... That's just what I do. Uh, I've read this entire series, but I didn't have copies of my own, so I'm slowly starting to collect it, collect it, and that is The Land of Painted Caves by Jean M. Ayle, and this is the Clan of the Cave Fair series that I previously mentioned. This is book five, I think. No, this is book six of the series. I also got book four and book five of the Over Newton series, which is The Keeping Place and 
uh, The Stone Key by Isabel Carmody. And lastly, I was lucky enough to pick up Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, which is the Last Hours book one, which is another series of hers following the Shadowhunter world. Now for the standalones I was lucky enough to get. So I got Jane in Love by Rachel Gibney. This has been on my want to read TBR wish list for a while and I managed to pick this one up at a secondhand shop for I think it was like three dollars. The Other Side of the Sky by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This came up on sale on Amazon for like four dollars so I could not not do it considering it also had been on my wish list for quite some time. There's authors out there that I've been collecting based on recommendations from people who know that I will love it and Harlan Coben is one of them so I picked up Shelter by Harlan Coben from I think an op shop for about four dollars or so and um, yeah so I have had some really good finds in op shops lately so I frequent them quite regularly there's about three on my drive home so it's really hard really hard for me to not want to stop next up is Kate Forsyth's Bitter Greens this is a Rapunzel retelling I believe which I managed to pick up for about four dollars from an op shop I also went into the op shop just for Becca's book Opalathon and picked up a whole bunch of small reads to try and fit in first I got a comic called this one summer which was by Jillian and Mariko Tamaki which I knew nothing about I just knew that a comic would be quick to get through but since looking into it a bit further it looks very much like a light-hearted kind of romance summer fun read so coming into summer here in Australia will be coming out of summer here in Australia and coming to the cooler months this one might sit on my shelf for a while then there was The Transmigration of Bodies, which was by Yuri Harida, which again, I purely picked up just because of the size, but having a look into it, it does sound very dark and twisted. And I believe it's written from a own voice author about contemporary Mexico, and it very much has Romeo and Juliet themes. So yeah, I'm excited. I also got Marsh and Me by Martine Murray. This is another just thin read that I picked up thinking that it would be fun, quick and easy to get through Becca's book of This one was a author buy. I knew nothing about the actual story, but I'd heard really good things about Patrick Ness. So I picked up A Monster Calls. Whenever I see a book has been turned into a movie, I get really excited about wanting to read it so that I can read it and then watch the movie straight away. So that very much is what led me to pick this one up. Again, only $2 at an op shop. And lastly is my Kristen Hanna collection I'm trying to grow. I picked up True Colors, which was... Um, at a secondhand bookshop, which was from a secondhand bookshop in my local hometown, picked this one up for $10. So, super keen. I have acquired a lot of new books in the last two months. I think the total, if I tally it, is something along the lines of like 40, 50 books. So, I'm trying to get Gab a run for his money, but I didn't quite get there. But I'm going to get these all categorized and on my shelves. <laughs> So you can see that currently I have plants along the top along with a couple of classics from Sarah J Maas. Then I have rainbow kind of that goes across and down and then across and down. And then in the middle I have Jay Kristoff, my J Percy Jackson, some Cassandra Clare and then my Twisted Tales and then my like book boxes and then I have like an empty shelf which I kind of use for books that I acquire or uh, books that I've read for the month and then I have some more series that I've read that are just kind of chilling at the bottom along with a bunch of candles and then I have my TBR cart which has my TBR on the top and my 21 I want to read in 2021 in the bottom and then in the middle and then right down the bottom is just books that I've been sent from publishers. 
So I have this chaos here and this chaos here that I need to try and fit on here. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the rainbow for my individual books, like my standalones. But then I'm going to probably put my series on like these bottom two shelves in series. So we'll see if it fits. Wish me luck. So it's much later in the day. Unfortunately, my camera has died. So I'm just going to give you a quick update. Um, as you can see, I kept my rainbow kind of up the top here. Um, still with those middle shells being very similar. And then I have put all of my series down below um, in alphabetical order of series title. Um, and then the books are in order of the actual series. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not mad about it. I just realized that this is like not in the right spot. Um, I'm not mad about it. I um, think it's going to be easier to find some things as well. Um, and it's also good that I can have all of my series together. And I managed to fit on my 50 new books. No problem. Stay tuned to see what I think about all of these books. I think my current TBR is now up to over 400. So uh, wish me luck. So there you have it guys, my new shelves. Let's see how long they stay like this for. As you know, I rearrange these shelves quite often, but thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy reading.